Welcome to Monster Man. Monster Man book review. <laughs> Hunter O'Shea here recommended this book to me and I read it. The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. And when you handed it to me, you were like, you yeah, buckle your seatbelts for this one. Yeah. And you're not kidding. I remember when you said to me when you were early into it, you were like, oh, it doesn't seem so bad. You know, I'm like, uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I just started it. Sure. Nothing yet. <laughs> this and I read a review on Amazon before I read the book, and mm -hmm. somebody was complaining that they shouldn't have read this book as the first Ketchum book, because they said I don't want to read anything else he wrote. <laughs> but like in a horror sense, it's because they were so horrified by it. Yeah. So for me, I was like, ooh, and I understand now that I read it, and I want to read some of his other stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said this to you after I read it. I enjoyed the book. Well, I, it's a good book. This is like big boy horror book. This is real horror. Because Jack Ketchum doesn't write about monsters and make believe yeah, stuff. Not Everything he writes could happen. This is horror done to a girl and her sister by people in the neighborhood. And uh, he's like a 10 year old boy or something yep. who's sort of a witness. And it's this could happen in the basement of the people next door to you and you wouldn't even know it. Yeah. So it's the stuff that happens isn't pretty. And it's not like they, you know, find an amulet that turns the monster away. It's like, this is... No, with all Jack Ketchum stuff, it's the horror is real and the monster is you. One thing I really liked about this book, you watch countless TV shows and movies, like The Goonies, for example. The kids are smarter than the adults. Right. You know, and they make all these brilliant, brilliant decisions and whatever. In this, the kid acts the way a kid would act. They don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. They sort of kind of watch things happen right? and don't say things to other people. Right, because kids do that. They freak yeah. out and they clam up. Yeah, and then, you know, how many times have you been like, why didn't you say something to me, you know, mm -hmm. about the, the littlest things? And that's what I liked about this. I felt like you wrote a kid. The way a kid is. The way a kid is. And I don't think he has kids. Well, good job. Even Mr. better. Uh, but... Again, if you are a kind of person that's just looking for some escapism and, you know, f fighting vampires or werewolves is, you know, the, the fun and game kind of horror, that's one thing. If you want to read a serious horror novel, then go down this path. Yep. And I'll just close out with a quick one. Comic book. Comic book update. Uh, I picked this thing up. Really good. Hoax Hunters. This is through Image Comics. It's this is kind of like people who have a show, a reality show, where they look at creatures, but they're also creatures. Oh, the cameraman is a wears a spaceman suit, but inside the suit is a flock of crows. It is out there and crazy, but it's fun. So I'm I'm three issues in. It just started over the summer. Is this so, hot chick in it? Yes, she is, and she has a power too. I won't give it away, but check out uh, Hoax Hunters. Wow. Three, three issues. I just opened it up and there's like a big Yeti looking thing. That's right, man. I think it's a skunk ape. Skunky. So, check that out when you get a chance to comic book. Awesome. I love the comic book update because you grab stuff I've just never heard of. I'm out there looking. I'm scouring. Anthony Venturola. Not that he's the oldest person I know, but I've just known him for the longest amount of time. Some days I feel like it. <laughs> now, Anthony has been kind enough to have me on the show, the uh, Spotlight, New York Spotlight on Success. Oh, the Diana Navarro Diana show. Navarro. I'm her co-host. And he's interviewed me, and we've talked, we've gone UFO hunting together in the past, and we, you know, we both have a love of ghosts. And it was scary. Or love hated ghosts. And he's my new buddy. We've been hanging out. That's right. I like him, too. And I've connected them. We never went UFO hunting, though. There is time. You know what? It's a big county. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. Where do we go UFO hunting? Pine Bush. The Bush, as they call it up there. Pine Bush, New York. It's upstate New York. It's actually not far from uh, here. Uh, no, about, it's a good hour 45 from here. but uh, Not the way I drive. Uh, well, hour 45. <laughs> 
Pinebush, New York is has been a hotbed of UFO activity, ghosts, Bigfoot, everything. Oh, you were telling me about yeah, this place. Everything that's we ever go. happened. Ellen sick. Crystal, PhD, used to write about the UFOs up there. She's since passed away, but it's a really it's farmland, so it's just now a she's haunting space. the place. She yeah, might be. So what do we? And people today still talk about it up there. So apparently something is still lingering. We gotta go. They outlawed. They outlawed sky gazing. We'll bring him. He can do the camera work for us. Come Shake your can. We were we were in Pine Bush years ago. And when you're out in the country, and this is the country, it's loud because there's crickets and birds and all kinds of stuff going on. Inbred guys. Couple of those. We, no, we, like ran, a we ran across a lot those of single we got to Ulster County. Um, we were walking in this uh, field, and it's all loud, and we see some lights in the distance, and everything is. Oh. It was dead silent. Yeah. Kind of like when Fonzie was outside, he said, Cool it! <laughs> Yeah, uh, that could be thing. that could be enough to turn a skeptic's mind. I will tell you. I mean, did that freak you out? Yeah, it, that the whole area freaked me out, but that was uh, that was an unusual incident. And yep. I have, I can be a skeptic at times, but that convinced me. Now, Anthony has been someplace that I was recently in Whaley House. Yep, up in uh, down in San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. Now, did you go during the day or at night? I uh, went during the day. Unfortunately, it was closed, but uh, it does have an aura of creepiness around it. A lot of people seem to stay away from it, like almost they were, you know, a little afraid to approach it. Even though it's in the middle of old time. It's pretty empty, right? I was surprised at that. It is kind of empty. Uh, you can, uh, the area around it, you have the old buildings around it, but the immediate area around it is kind of like uh, trees and uh, stone. Yeah, a lot of Mex yeah. great Mex friends, most friends Mexicans right on the block. <laughs> oh, yeah. Best talk Did you see about. anything? Did you feel anything? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I am going to post a little something on Facebook. I might have felt a little something on the uh, porch ah, outside the really house. So perhaps you should check out my Facebook, and uh, I'll be sure to post it with it. Right, we'll put your link up here uh, for Facebook. Yeah. Thank Thank you. You. Now, because I was in there for two hours on a nice sunny day, and I felt... Nothing. Although I felt enriched that I got to learn the history and I got to walk. The you're wicked night. smart now. I felt and saw nothing. What makes that good is in your, you're in the middle of a historic district. There's a lot of things that are preserved. So even if you're kind of skeptical or whatever, you could sense a lot of what used to go on there 100 years ago, 200 years ago. Right. So if you're intuitive, let's just say, like a person I know, you can probably uh, pick up a lot of things. Yeah, I mean, I could say... I look at it this way. They say when you drink and you break the seal, the rest is for real when it comes to going to the bedroom. I've broken the seal as far as goes to the paranormal. And since that happened in the 90s, there's been a lot of stuff that's happened. Have you peed on a ghost? <laughs> Ghostly golden shower. Don't no. cross the streams. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You got it Thank in. you. Good night. You got it in. Nice. Casper ain't white no more. <laughs> Now, uh, I know that you still do you, you still do a show every week, right? Yeah, well, we were on the hiatus now, the Dan and Navarro show, uh, working things out. Uh, I still intend to broadcast, hopefully with her in the future. She is doing the Spotlight on Success, NY yep. Spotlight on Success. Which is, they held the paranormal panel that we were on, yep. correct? And then we got to meet our psychic friends oh, sitting good. behind the camera yeah. there. Hi, psychic friends. Hey there. We'll get them later. Network. Yep. She knew we were going to say that. <laughs> Uh, we have gone, well, you were with us. We were at the Manhattan Bistro. We got to see, is it 8200? Oh, with the well? With the well, yeah. We, we did together. a show about that. Oh, yeah. Well. Yes. We didn't see anything at the well. Well, it's amazing well, something well. like that, that old can survive in New York. I mean, that's a miracle in itself. Yeah, that's real old. It's freaky, yeah. And then the building got built around it. Yeah. The building was from the 1800s, the well from the 1750s, I think. So, or something like that. 1780s, I think. 17, yeah, right. Yeah. Post Revolutionary War, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. So but, too, it but it's strange, there's too many people, you, you can't dismiss it because too many people have heard things, you know, different types of people, patrons, workers. That's always what gets me about ghost stories is I've never really seen anything, but so many other people say they see things yeah. that I'm like, something's got to be going on. They can't all be BS. It was said best by Caesar in Battle for the Planet of the Apes, where there is smoke, there is fire. Indeed. Thank you, Caesar. And thank you, Anthony, for being here. What's your favorite horror movie? Well, Mike stole my thunder to flow. It is The Omen, but I'm going to throw two more out of you from the 70s that I really like. 
The Sentinel? Oh, oh, the Sentinel! We just watched that! that. I love that. I've never seen that. And, Burgess uh, Meredith. Yes, Burgess Meredith and, uh, well, I forget the rest of the cast right now, and uh, Demon Seed. Oh, oh Demon, Demon Seed. I haven't seen that really long Christy. Yeah, yeah, that's a good choice. So beautiful. Demon Seed and The Sentinel. The yeah. Sentinel has um, Christopher Walken. Oh, right. right. Walken, Eli Wallach. It's like Eli Wallach like, like, with a tie that's like this wide. Oh, it's got yeah. a Sylvia Miles. Yeah. It's got a million people in it. It's a class. Everyone should that's see That's got it. some disturbing visions in it. Yeah, and then if uh, the Demon oh, Seed uh, subsequent, uh, the sequels were not that great, but just having right. a computer rape a girl is kind of... Fascinating. <laughs> IT to a new level. All right, man. Thank you Great. for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. On to the next. Good. On to the next. <laughs>